Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video uh, is going to, it's another video in this small series of videos on probability. But more importantly, this short video is going to deal with the addition rule. So I suppose what we need to do, first of all, is we need to define the addition rule. So our, let's say our definition. Okay. Uh, and the definition for this is, is going to be something like this uh, that the probability of event A happening or event B happening is simply equal to the sum of the individual probabilities so it's the probability of A plus the probability of B okay? uh, when both A and B are mutually exclusive of each other uh, that means that they don't share anything in common. Uh, for example, they're a red card or a black card, or it's a head or a tail, it's an even number or an odd number. So events uh, that have that particular, I suppose, characteristic are known as events uh, that are mutually exclusive. So this particular rule here, where simply the sum of the individual probabilities is the mutually is for mutually exclusive events. Mm -hmm. For mutually exclusive events. Okay. Uh, when the two events are not mutually exclusive, there's a, another version of this rule, actually it's known as the general version, which says that the probability of A or B, it's still equal to the sum of the individual probabilities, so it's equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, but because uh, A and B share some characteristic, and when we were counting the number of favourable outcomes for A, and then when we start to count the number of favourable outcomes for B, we would have overcounted. We would have counted some of them things that are that have the same characteristic as an A and A. So what we need to do is we need to take away the joint event. This is the probability uh, of A and B. In other words, we're going to take away uh, how many events we overcounted relative to the total number of possible outcomes. Okay. So they are the rules. I suppose the best way to try to get our head around this and to understand what's going on here is to, let's say, is to consider uh, an example. So here we have an example. Uh, and this example, let's say, is where we, where we roll, roll a, single, a single die, okay? a six-sided die. Uh, we know that the sample space for this particular experiment, the sample space, let's symbolize that by S, is simply the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So let's say we perform this experiment, we roll a single die, uh, and what we're interested in, what is the probability, okay, what is the probability that the outcome when we roll a die is equal to a 1, or that the outcome when we roll a die is equal to, let's say, is equal to a 5. So to win the game, what we need to do is we need to roll a 1 or we need to roll a 5. Okay. So because we're using the word or, okay, or is our trigger uh, for us to be able to identify what rule we need to apply. So this is the or rule or the addition rule. Okay. And the addition rule says simply take the two events. That's the first event is listed to the left of the OR and the second event to the right of the OR. Take the two events and calculate their individual probabilities. No matter what, whether the events are mutually exclusive, we'll have to calculate the individual probabilities. If they're not mutually exclusive, we still have to calculate their individual probabilities. So let's just work from this particular perspective initially. Okay, so what we have here is that the probability that the, the outcome when we roll a die is equal to one, or the outcome is equal to a 5, is going to be minimum equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. So it's going to be the probability that the outcome is a 1 plus the probability that the outcome is, is a 5. Okay. Now let's have a look at the sample space. Let's calculate the probability of the outcome being a 1. Now we know another rule that says that the probability of an event is simply the ratio of the number of favourable outcomes, so the number of favourable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. Okay, So that's our basic rule. So to calculate the probability that the outcome is 1, okay, what we need to do is we walk the sample space from left to right and we count how many things in the sample space meet this condition or satisfy this condition. In other words, how many things in the sample space are a 1? There's only one thing in the sample space. So the number of favourable outcomes is 1. 
And the number of possible outcomes is the size of the sample space for this particular experiment, which is six. So let's actually just list, let's actually circle our favourable outcomes for this experiment. So the favourable outcome is simply a one. Its probability is one over six. When it comes to calculating the probability of rolling a five, well we can see that the number of favourable outcomes is there's only one five in the sample space, so it's also one over the number of possible outcomes is there's six possible outcomes. Okay. Now, so when we roll the five, or what's the probability that we'll roll a five, when we circle the five to say that we've counted it, okay, what we can hopefully see in this scenario, very simple and straightforward scenario, I believe, is that the two outcomes, okay, or the two events that we're interested in, okay, they share nothing in common. There's no overlap between the things I counted as favourable for the first event compared to the things, the objects that I counted as favourable for the second event. There's no overlap. In which case we say they're mutually exclusive. Okay. So in this situation here, the probability that the outcome when we roll a die is a 1 or the outcome when we roll a die is a 5 is simply equal to the sum of the individual probabilities, which is equal to 1 sixth plus 1 sixth gives us two sixths, which is you've got a one in three chance of getting a one or a five when we roll a die. Okay. Let's do another experiment. Let's say what's the probability, okay, that when I roll a die I get an even number, okay, or I get a number less than less than four. Okay. Let's say for argument's sake. Okay. So once again we're using the word or so we know that we're in the addition rule minimum we're going to have to add the individual probabilities together okay? but let's see what happens with this particular experiment okay so minimum we're going to have to calculate the individual probabilities for both of these events event a and b so this is going to become the probability that x the outcome is equal to even the outcome is an even number plus the probability that the outcome is less than is less than four okay so let's have a look at the sample space again i'll just do a, a clean sample space over here S is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And let's calculate the probability of an even number. Okay. Well, the number of favourable outcomes is how many things in the sample space match this condition. How many things are even numbers? Well, there's, there's 1, there's 2, there's 3. There's 3 even numbers in this sample space. So the probability of getting an even number okay, is equal to, well, three favourable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes, the number of possible outcomes being the size of our sample space. So we get three chances in six, or three and six probability. Okay. Let's have a look at the probability of rolling a number that's less than four. Okay. Well, which numbers in the sample space are less than four? There's a one, there's a two, and there's a three. Okay. Gives us one, two, three possibilities. So in this situation here, once again, we have three chances and six. Okay. Now what we hopefully we notice is that when we counted the events uh, that match the condition even, okay, we counted two, four and six. When we counted the events that were less than four, we counted the events one, two and three. Hopefully what we can see here is that we've double counted. We've counted the outcome two in relation to the even numbers and we've also counted the outcome two in relation to the numbers less than four. Now we only ever want to count once so we've over counted in this situation. Okay? So what have we over counted? We've over counted things that are even and they're less than four which means that we must take away how many times we've over counted them. So we need to take away the probability that the event is even and the event is less than is less than four. Okay. So how many things are even and less than four in our sample space? There's just one of them. How many things are possible? There's six things. So we need to take away one chance and six or one and six, which gives us a probability of three sixes plus three sixths gives us six sixths minus one sixth gives us five sixths. Okay, so this was a pretty straightforward uh, experiment. It was an experiment where we had just simply rolling a single die. Okay. Let's do another example. Okay. Let's say this time, okay, the experiment that we're interested in, this example, okay, 
let's say the experiment okay is we're rolling we're rolling two dice okay so we're going to roll two dice now the question that 